Bless you. The prayers, everything that's done in the house of God, it's, uh, I appreciate everything that you do and put forth an effort, uh, praying and uh, coming to be a part of the service. If you have your Bibles today, let's go ahead and turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Ephesians 2, some familiar verses of Scripture. We're going to read the first uh, three Scriptures there. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter number 2, we get reading in verse 1. It says, And you hath he quickened, that means made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I know that's an unusual place to stop. I know all of you like the next verse, but we're going to stop right there. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. God, we want to thank you for saving us. Thank you, God, for keeping us, Lord, for a precious home called heaven that one day we got. We can look forward to now, but one day our faith is going to become reality and we'll stand before you, God, and see our perfect home. We want to thank you, God, for all the promises that we can stand on that we find in your word. We ask you this morning that you would bless the reading of God's word. Lord, give the increase on it. Open our hearts and minds and give us wisdom and understanding from your word. But most of all, we ask that you would give salvation. If there's someone here that's lost and undone, don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, our prayers today that they would come to know you as their personal Savior before it's ever too late. And for us Christians, we ask God, if there's some here today, this, uh, Lord, they will turn their back, walk away from you, Lord, not serving you like they used to. I pray, God, that you'll draw them closer to you by the preaching of God's Word, and Lord, that they'll come uh, to an altar of repentance today. Lord, laying aside every weight and sin that's between them and you. We thank you and praise you for everything that you do. We ask now that you bless the reading of your Word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'll look at these three verses here. Uh, to start this chapter, Paul is talking about our past. Uh, he talks about how we walked. He talks about our conversation, what it was like. He talks about what we were like. He talks about the desires of the flesh that we had. He talks about these things and then he kind of sums it up by saying this in verse 3. He said, and we're by nature the children of wrath. By nature we were the children of wrath. You know what he's saying there? That's how you were born. That's how you were brought into this world. That's the kind of world you were brought into. I want to preach on this thought today. I was born this way. I was born this way. That's what he's saying here. He said, all this, this is how y'all are. This is how you were. This is how all you are. All of us have took part in the lust of the flesh and desires of the flesh. All of you have had these conversations of amongst all those that are ungodly. You've done these things. You fulfilled the desires of the flesh. Then he says, but by nature you are the children of wrath. He's saying you were born children of wrath. You were born sinners. You walked according to the course of this world. And, you, and then it says it's fulfilling the desires of the flesh as if they were already there. They were. You were just fulfilling them. The desires of the flesh were already in the flesh. You were fulfilling them and by doing the things that he said you done. The Bible, which is not a surprise to me because the Bible teaches us in Psalm 51 it says, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was shapen in iniquity and in sin my mother did conceive me. That is not saying by any means that it is a sin to have a child. It's not saying that. But what it is teaching us is that by one man sin is entered the world and that was through Adam and what happened was that sin passed upon every individual it passed upon the next one the next one how did it pass from one person to the next by reproduction right by a child being born it passed into that one when that child had children it passed upon the next one so yes you my friend were born a sinner for now on, so for now on, when somebody says, I was born this way, the correct answer is, yes, you are right. You were born that way. That's the way, I know that's not popular among the church. That's not popular among conservatives to, uh, to accept that phrase, I was born this way. But it's the truth. It's the correct answer. We are all sinners by birth. Right. 
We're all sinners by birth. I too was born a sinner. You were born a sinner. The Old Testament teaches us there's none in this world without sin. Not one. There's none without sin. Ecclesiastes says, There's not a just man that walketh the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. For all those people that think that you can walk this earth and never sin and you can live a sinless, perfect life, the Bible says there's no just man upon the earth that walketh and doeth good and sinneth not. That's what the Bible says. When you get over to Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When you get to 1 John 1 and 10, the Bible says if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the Word is not in us. Jesus don't live in us if we say we have not sinned. Isaiah says it like this. He says, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Now get this. He says, our righteousness, not his. Our righteousness. Our righteousness is probably, I guess, when you say our righteousness, is the good part of us. That's the good part because you got the bad side, you got the unrighteous side of us, you got the ungodly side of us, the sinning part of us, but then you got a righteous side of us, I guess. And the Bible says this that good part of us ain't nothing but filthy rags. We are sinners by birth. See, it does not matter what sin you're talking about, it all stems from one seed from which you were born. All sin does. All sin started in the garden with Adam. All sin started and it stemmed. All of it came from that one seed from which you were born. By nature, you are the children of wrath. See, I told you, you were born this way. Now, once you're born in this world, you got choices to make. You can be attracted to or run to certain sins, certain things more than other things. Uh, once you begin to fulfill the particular desire that you are attracted to, you'll then fall in love with that sin, get addicted to that sin, and you will automatically try to justify that sin and say that it's okay and it's right because that's really all you know how to do. No matter what sin it is. And that's why people go around today saying, I was born this way. I don't have a problem with that saying anymore that I'm born this way. All they're doing is confirming that the Bible has already said you were born a sinner. You were born in this world a sinner. That's how they were born. But good news is God gave us a remedy for that. God gave us a solution for that. God gave us a fix for that. And God gave us the fix for the results of sin. God gave us a fix for all sin to wash away our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and give us a brand new start. God gives us that. You know that? You don't deserve it. You didn't earn it. God gives you a brand new start, a new way of life, a new life, an eternal life in heaven. How in the world can that happen if I was born in sin? Well, the Bible says you must be born again. You must be born again. See, we've talked about that first birth, but that ain't the only birth mentioned in the Bible. That ain't the only birth mentioned in the Bible. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You, he didn't say you should be. He didn't say you ought to be. He said you must be born again. He said that which is born of the flesh, Nicodemus, it's born of the flesh. That's flesh. You'll never change it. You notice that when he says that which is born of the flesh, it's flesh. Jesus never changed that. Jesus never said you can clean that up, wash that up, and change that flesh. He said that which is born of the flesh, it's flesh. It is what it is. It always will. It's flesh. That's what he said. But then he said you must be born of the Spirit. You may look at me like a deer in headlights today and say, what do you mean by being born again? You're the one that needs to be born again. Amen. If you don't know what born again is, you don't know what a spiritual birth is, you're still in your sin, in the flesh. You've had one birth, but you, my friend, need to be born again. Jesus said you must be. Yes, you were born that way. You were born in sin, but you don't have to stay in sin. You don't have to stay that way. As a matter of fact, Jesus put it this way. You don't need to stay that way. He said you must be born again. It does not matter if you're an alcoholic you must be born again. It does not matter if you're a drug addict, you must be born again. It does not matter if you're a sodomite, you must be born again. It does not matter if you're a compulsive liar, you must be born again. It does not matter what sin it is, the Bible says it's all sin and it all stemmed from the first sin, that seed of Adam in the garden when he took of the fruit, when him and Eve took of the fruit. That's where it all came from and that's where all of you came from. And the Bible says this, 
The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death, but no problem. God had a way to fix that. He said God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God made a way for you to not only be born the first time, but God made a way for you to be born again and be saved from your sin, from that seed of sin. Nicodemus had it all wrong. You and Nicodemus ask. He said this, which is common, I guess, would be a common answer for a human mind. When Jesus said you must be born again, he said, wait a minute, you mean I got to enter my mother's womb the second time? <laughs> you mean I got to go and do this all over again? Jesus said, no. If you do the same thing again, you're going to get the same results. You go back and do that again and you're going to get the same results you got the first time. You don't need to be born of the flesh again. You're there. You're in it. He said, but you must be born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, you don't need to be born of your mother again. You need to be born of your father. You need to be born of the Savior. You need to be born again. You need to be saved. You need a spiritual birth. You need a spiritual awakening. You need your eyes enlightened and open to the truth that Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. Jesus Christ is the only one that anybody can get to the Father through is through the Son Jesus Christ. He said Nicodemus you must be born again. I'm telling you today you must be born again. And Jesus is saying I'll give you a new birth. I'll give you a new life. I'll give you eternal life by being born again. I thank God that I am today standing before you. Nothing I've done but I am born again by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. And, and I'll tell you what when I, when I got saved the Bible says all things become new. And then I'll tell you what, things changed in my life when I got saved. Now I'm preaching to you I was born this way. When I got saved, I had friends starting to kind of part ways with me. I was worried, I'm gonna tell you what, Brother Charles, when I got saved, I was worried before I got saved that I was worried that I was gonna have to talk to my friends and then I was worried that I was gonna have to part ways with them. I didn't have to. <laughs> When I got saved, Brother Chad, they just started parting ways with me. They started being standoffish and not coming around. What I'm telling you is, when I got saved, all things become new. I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And my old friends that used to hang around me said, you ain't the same person you used to be. I mean, I've had people say that. I remember one right now. In my mind, I can see him telling me one time. He said, you're just completely different, man. You ain't the same person that I used to hang around. You don't drink. You don't cuss. You don't go to the same places we used to go. You don't do that same old stuff you used to do. He said, how in the world do you you live that way. My answer is I was born this way. I was born again, see. Hey, I was born in sin, but then I was born again. And when I got born again, I was born this way. Why do I go to church? Because I was born this way. Why do I worship God? I was born this way. Why do I talk different? I was born this way. Why do I don't drink no more? I was born this way. Why don't I cuss anymore? I was born this way. Why don't I go to the ballroom? I was born this way. Why do I love God? I was born this way. I was born born again. And when I was born again, I was born away from sin and drawn away from sin. Where sin did abound, grace did much more abound in my life. Sin was up here and sin was ruling my life. But then I was born again. And yes, thank God I was born this way. If anybody asks you why you are like you are, just tell them I was born this way. I met the King. I met the Savior. And when I knelt down that altar and I got a hold of God, I got up a new creature. I had a new birth. I had a new walk. I had a new home. And I had a new spirit. And it's because of Jesus Christ saved me. And I was born again. Yes, I was born this way. I love the things I used to hate and I hate the things I used to love. Why? Because I've been born again. I ain't the same creature I used to be, Brother John. It ain't my works of righteousness which I have done, but by His mercy He has saved me. And now I've been accepted into the Beloved. I've been accepted into the family of God. And it feels good to be part of the family. I tell you, I'm glad I'm saved, born again, and on my way to heaven, but it's all because God gave me the opportunity to be born again. I'm sure my wife's glad things changed. <laughs> and no, I didn't do that to her eye. Mm. 
I'm sure everywhere she's been here lately, people, she said people stare at her because she's got this big old, had a, when it first happened, she had a goose egg there, a big old cut across her eye. I said, it looks just like somebody gave you a left hook. <laughs> and I'm sure when she went the other night, that church stuff, and I bet there's a lot of women see her and say, that poor lady, her husband probably beats her. <laughs> that poor lady, I feel so sorry for her. She be- <laughs> she works at a vet's office and she was holding a dog and the dog turned around and bit her on the face. And that's what happened to her. But I'm, I, I bet you when you ask her, I bet she sure is glad I got born again. I sure am glad she got born again. I'm sure I'm glad you're born again if you're born again. We all, listen, we're all here together. We've all been born in the flesh. We've all been born in the flesh. If you wasn't, you wouldn't be here. We've all been, we've all been brought into this thing the same way. But if you're going to get to heaven, there's only one way. And it is to be born again. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be. He didn't say should be. He said you must be born again. There must be a spiritual birth take place in your life. I was born in sin, but then I was born again. And friend, if you're just born in sin and not born again, you're going to die in your situation and go to a place called hell. Right. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. That's what God said and that's what God means. And I'm sure there's a lot of you today. I know, I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of lost people out there that look at your life and say, you don't live the same way you used to. You don't act the same way you used to. You don't do the same thing. You don't go places. Well. You don't do these things like we run to the excess of right as the Bible said. You don't do those same things. You know what your answer ought to be to them? I was born this way. This is the way it is when you get born again. This is how we change. We all were born into this world by a physical birth. But if you want to get into heaven, it's going to happen to be by a spiritual birth. Amen. You must be born again. I'm thankful for my mother and all of you should be. You're all thankful for your daddy and you should be. I am because that's how I got here. But I thank God for my Heavenly Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, because by Him, I'm going to get to go to heaven one day. I'll enter the portals of glory. But this is how I was born. No excuses. I was born this way. I was born again. And my question to you is, have you just had that physical birth? Because if all you've had is a physical birth and no spiritual birth, and you die in the condition you're in, friend, you're going to spend eternity in a place called hell. That's not my way. That's not our way. That's God's way. That's how God wrote it in the book. God tells a story of a man that died in his sin and ended up in a place called hell. And a lot of people, listen, this is one of the biggest lies the devil ever tell you. I know he told me the same thing. He said, it won't matter because once I get there, I won't know anything. You read about the man that died in the Bible in the book of Luke. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew so much. First of all, he desired one drop of water to cool his tongue. One. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about that? When the most important thing in your life is one drop of water. He could feel, he could hear, he could talk. And he had a burden for his lost brothers. He said, somebody go tell my lost brothers not to come to this place. what he said he died and he ended up in a place called hell because he rejected the son Jesus Christ and friend it ain't no different for you and me if you die in the state of sin without being born again you're going to end up in a place called hell and the bad thing is people go there every day the Bible says hell has has enlarged itself that's what it says in Isaiah that hell has enlarged itself why does it need to grow because it's getting overrun yep it's getting filled up. The Bible said hell has enlarged itself. The sad thing is there's people going there every day when God paid the price by the blood of His own Son as a sacrifice so then people could escape the flames of hell, spend eternity in heaven, and have peace forevermore. It's sad to say so many more people choose hell instead of heaven. And how many times have you heard this question? If there's a loving God, if there really is a loving God, why would He send somebody to somewhere like that? He don't. You choose to go there. When God gives you the truth and He says the truth is, you can accept my Son. He's done it all. He's paid the hard, He's done the hard part. He's paid the price. You accept my Son, go to heaven. Be forgiven of your sins. Or reject my Son and spend eternity in a place called hell. The choice is yours. Not mine to make for you. 
not anybody else's make for you. It's your choice to make right here, right now, today, to be born again. But so many people say, why would a loving God do that? Why would a loving God give you an opportunity to go to heaven when you've done nothing to deserve it? Why would a loving God send His only Son to a cross to die like He did so you could live forever? Why would a loving God uh, who did no sin and His Son never sinned put all your sin on Him to die on a cross so you can be forgiven of your sin? Well, it ain't fair, is it? But that's what God done. Why? So you can be born again. We've all came here the same way, but we ain't all leaving the same way. Those that accept Jesus Christ will go to heaven. Those that reject Jesus Christ will go to hell. It don't matter what other religions say. It don't matter what all the Muslims and Islam and all that stuff says. It, they all trying to die for the shepherd. In this book, the shepherd died for the sheep. He died for you. You don't have to die for him. He's not asking you to die for him. He's asking you to live for him. Because he's already died for you. And I ask you today, have you been born again? And I know what you're thinking in your mind. How in the world can this be? And that's what Nicodemus said. How can this be? And Jesus said to Nicodemus, you can come on to the piano, sister. Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, the wind blows where it listeth. No, the wind blows where it wants to. It blows. And he said, Nicodemus, can you tell me where that wind came from and where it went? I can't see it. How can I know? What he's saying is, that wind done that and you can't even figure it out. He said, you can't figure out earthly things. How can you figure out the spiritual things I'm trying to tell you. Now, a lot of people miss this, and I missed it for a long time. We hear the story of Nicodemus. We quote John 3.16, but in John 3.16, Jesus is still speaking to Nicodemus. He's still, the conversation is still taking place. And that's what he said. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And Nicodemus didn't realize Jesus was speaking of Himself as He was talking to him. He said, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that you, Nicodemus, if you believe on Me, that's what He was saying, on oh, Jesus can be saved and go to heaven when this life's over. You will not perish, but you'll go to heaven. You mean all i got to do is believe on Jesus Christ? The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. It don't matter what color you are. It don't matter what gender you are. It don't matter what side of the tracks you live on or what side you came from. It don't matter where, what state you live in or what country you was born in. What matters is, are you born again? You have had a natural birth to get here, but you're going to need a spiritual birth to get there. And I ask you today, have you been saved? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Let's all stand.